Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you can tell from our consultation, um, she has kind of a bit of a color correction only in the sense that we'll see later when I do highlight her. She does have that band that she was talking about and she just said that she didn't really love the way that her hair turned out last time because it was just warm. And normally she gets like an ash blonde tone and she's really just looking for something that's going to be low maintenance. She doesn't have a ton of gray as you guys can see. She just has like a few little sparkles here and there. But I want to create something that is going to grow out really nicely against her natural hair. But also make her feel good with the tone of blonde. So I'm going in with the Danger Jones bleach. I absolutely love this bleach. If any of you guys have been following along, I use this on all of my clients for literally every type of blonding service. I It's so versatile for foils or hand painting or even uh, root retouches like bleach and tones and all of that. It is absolutely amazing. Um, there I was showing um, that she had some banding. So in the back you can see like she has a lot of dark there and I was able to kind of see where she has some previous color and by color i mean like permanent color in her hair something that has really shifted her virgin hair that is in between her highlights and i just want to be completely clear that this video is not intended to shame the other hairdresser that did her hair previously this is just for educational purposes to kind of show what is really going on with her hair um, like she expressed in her consultation she was going to someone for a couple years and she was going to them consistently and then the last time that she got her hair done it just lifted really warm so somewhere in between there um, she got color done and that color ultimately shifted her base and so now when we go in and highlight her she does have a band because there seems to be some like permanent color or something that shifted her base and now is lifting a lot warmer than the rest of her hair and she normally wears her hair in an ash blonde so our goal is to try and just get her as light as possible but of course also to kind of get this even as possible too so i'm using the danger jones lightener i mixed up a first bowl of like 5 volume and 20 volume the rest of the head i'm going to be just doing 20 volume and i'm not changing my developer after that i just go in 20 volume from root to end even though i know the band is in there i will tackle the band later because i want to get through the foils as quickly as possible and then tackle any banding later i just find that this is just a little bit more quicker and a little bit more efficient versus me trying to use different developers but this is just my personal preference based off of what i see and how her hair feels so as i'm doing this technique i will do a detailed hairline around the nape of the neck in the back i usually will do a couple weaves and then i take a center section up the back and just do slices i'm just going in and slicing her hair because i find that slices are just going to make my job a lot quicker and easier and since this is a correction too when i retouch it it's going to make it a hundred times easier for me to pick out the pieces that need to be retouched for next time and in the consultation too i was a little concerned because she told me that she used overtone but she did say that her hair lifted pink before her using overtone um, the reason why i was a little like concerned is because in the past for my experience at least sometimes if a client uses overtone that will affect the virgin hair in between and can lift pink so that's why i kind of asked if she had to use overtone but to be clear she said she did not use overtone until after the whole lifting pink situation happened so i'm not really sure what is on her hair um i don't know if it's really like what kind of permanent color because the way that this color lifts later i'll show you is kind of like a hot pinkish um, if you guys have any guesses or anything like that or are familiar or know what it may be based off of what her hair looks like right now um, then comment down below i would love to hear your thoughts or if you guys have any other like experience with it too because 
uh, I'd love to know and um, it would be very helpful too for any type of future coloring um, but my guess is I think at one point maybe she got her hair toned and maybe the hairdresser might have used like permanent color by accident or something that's just my guess I don't know but um, nonetheless it did affect the rest of her hair and so she's kind of gonna have to live with every time we highlight her hair that there's gonna be a little bit of banding and then we gotta re-hit it and until we kind of get it all out she won't be able to really be that like ashy icy blonde that she wants to be because we're gonna be working on getting rid of like this warmth this warm band that's really in her hair that we'll show you guys later. And she did want a money piece, so I just did some foils and slicing around her hairline to kind of create a nice bold money piece, but not too bold because I feel like the chunky money piece has kind of gotten out of style, but we're doing somewhat semi-bold because she did like that the front was lighter in a lot of the photos, so um, just going in and I believe I did a baby light around the hairline and then just like slices after that and then connected the front hairline with the back mohawk and then did two on the front sides there. Now I'm connecting the front with the back and doing a side section. So this foil right above the ear, very important. This is going to connect her money piece with the back hair so there's no black hole. And this side section is just what connects the front hairline to that back mohawk section. So essentially there's only like three major sections in the hair where um, she has her slices and then everything else is just detailed hairline foils that I will normally customize according to whether or not the client wants like a money piece or not. Um, but yeah, I'm still using 20 volume throughout this part. My slices are see-through and I would say my sectioning is about half an inch apart um, because I don't want something that's too heavy. She wants something that's gonna grow out nicely with her gray. She doesn't have a ton of gray. Uh, so we want something that's slightly dimensional and soft at the root, but at the same time I don't want to make it too dimensional because we do want to get rid of a lot of the warmth and peachy tones that she is having a problem with. So just like a, a somewhere in the middle where it's not too heavy and not too dimensional. And then obviously eventually when we get this pretty much good and a lot of that peachy warm tone out we can definitely make it a little bit more dimensional and grow in a little softer okay so now i'm showing you guys a little peek so once i was done foiling her i went to go take a peek in the back and this is what she was lifting to so her root is her virgin you can see it's pretty much lifted i would say it's like lifted to like a level eight or so and then you can kind of tell that the mids is lifting that pinky tone like she warned me about. So yeah, if you guys have any thoughts or ideas of what this might or what this could have been in her hair that's creating this banding, leave a comment down below because I would love to hear what you guys have experienced or anything um, because I'm, I am very curious. Okay, so really important part of this whole correction. So before I pulled out her foils, and by the way, I know that her foils are done because once wherever like the virgin root is, when that's lifted to pretty much a level nine, I wanna stop. I don't want it to reach a level 10 because I know her ends are not gonna reach a level 10. Um, so I do want to try and keep the root lifted to like a warm tone and the warm tone would be like an eight or nine So I'm pulling out those foils because I know that the ends Are not going to lift that light and if I lift it to a level 10 then I kind of have a Problem with toning. It's just a little bit more tricky when you have to fill the hair versus not so anyways 
the most important part that I wanted to share with you guys by doing this correction is you see how I did the mohawk section of her head and it's like really easy because I did slices and all the hair that I left in between her slices I purposely separated and braided it to the side and the reason why this is going to be so helpful is because right now I'm pulling out her foils because her root is pretty much done I don't want it to be any lighter otherwise I'm gonna to have to fill the hair and color correct that part so we're pulling out the foils before it gets too light and you can see the mid is like it's like pinkish it's sorry the lighting is actually terrible um, from this angle but it's pinkish you can see it's a lot warmer than the root the root looks more of like a yellow tone and the mid looks like a salmon tone and so I braided the hair the dimension that are, is in between the foils so that I could grab the highlights all together. So what I'm doing is I'm rinsing out the highlights all together, but I'm keeping the highlights isolated. And the reason why I'm keeping them isolated is because it's going to make my life a thousand times easier to relighten these salmon pieces, like the mid band, because it's isolated. Like if I were to just rinse out all these foils and not isolate all the dimension in between, it would be nearly impossible for me to relighten this band. So because of this, this saves me maybe even a few sessions. And when I learned this trick, it was so game changing for me because with color corrections and banding and even like box color or anything, this really saves my life and makes the sessions and process go a lot quicker because now we're working smarter and not harder. And everything is already nicely sectioned away and isolated so that I can relighten what is necessary. And I'm going to do this every time when she comes in and gets her touch-ups because later when I do lighten the band, so I rinse off all of the lightener on the root and I relighten the band, that salmon color does happen to get a lot lighter. And You'll see at the end of this video that her hair is able to kind of get to like a, a blondish tone without being too warm or too salmon-y. And I was quite impressed with how much lighter I was able to get that salmon color out just by having lightener on it just for like a few minutes. And now when I'm like reapplying, I'm not even putting like fresh lightener. I'm using some like leftover lightener that I did from her highlights. So it's not even super strong because it's been sitting in my bowl. I just need something that is just gonna bump it out a little bit more. Um, I don't wanna put too much stress on it because this is a correction I wanna be very careful with her hair. And it did work. Just leaving it on like an extra like layer after rinsing her foils out, bumped it a little bit and she was able to get a lot of that pinkish tone out just by doing this extra step for the correction. So now you can see I'm going in with some lightener, applying that, and I'd probably just use 20 volume. I wouldn't even like do a higher volume. You could do a lower volume, but I find that 20 volume or just like your whatever's left over in your bowl is totally fine. Okay, so now I'm going to be going in with the Danger Jones gloss toners and I love using these gloss toners because when even doing like a correction like this, it is extremely hydrating to the hair. It makes the hair feel so soft. I feel like when I brush through it, it's very conditioning and it gives such amazing shine as well too. The other plus side is when toning, it has really great pigment. So with the Ash toners um, and like the violets it has a really strong pigment to where when I'm trying to fight warmth when doing a correction like this it really comes in handy because the pigment is really opaque I would say it's not super translucent so it really does cover and tone really nicely so for her formulation, I did her root shadow with 6-01, and then for her mids and ends, I did a mixture of the 9-2 and some 6-01. 
and then here is what it looks like once it's all straight and blow dried. I just wanted to share this really quick clip because I'm about to curl it. How's it feel? It feels nice, nice and light. I like the color. No, I don't like it. Yeah, too. Yeah. It wasn't as terrible as we thought it'd be. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it isn't. And your ends got really light too mm -hmm. with the toner. No, I really like the, the tone of the highlights. Mm -hmm. And then with your gray mm -hmm. too, it'll grow really soft. Nice. Alright, you guys, so here is the end result from that whole correction. It came out really nice. I think so. I feel like it looks very neutral, less warm for sure from when she came in. It's not perfect. It's not her icy blonde that she was looking for, but at least we got a lot of that salmon tone out. And now that I know what her hair is going to lift to next time, we're going to be doing the same thing and just kind of lighten her up a little bit more and just gradually get her there because my main concern is the health of her hair and also blending her roots and i feel like today her hair looks really good and healthy it felt fine after lightening out that band a little bit more but the most important part is that at least her roots are nice and blended now and when this grows out it is going to grow a lot softer than before and feel a lot less warm and there is a clip of her roots looks nice and blended can't even see any line of demarcation or anything like that Alrighty, guys that is it for this week's episode thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in and as always i will talk to you guys next week